Anna here. Today, we've got a fun session focusing on the backhand front court offense footwork, following up for the reply of a straight net shot back. Now, while I was prepping for this session, a funny story came to mind of something really embarrassing that happened to me during my professional career. And the reason it came to mind is because I was hitting this exact shot that we're practicing the footwork for in the backhand side of the net when it happened. Now don't repeat this, but what ended up happening was I was going for a shot, I was playing doubles, and I was going for the shot, and all of a sudden, out of my short pockets, a pair of my underwear fell onto the court. It must have got mixed in with the clothes in the wash. And so I immediately didn't know what it was and I stopped and called a let and my partner realized and we were both so embarrassed. And then I walked up to the umpire with a straight face and said, um, is it a let if your underwear falls onto the court? And he didn't laugh. I don't know if he understood what I was saying, but the rest of us had a good laugh about it. So it's always important to not take yourself too seriously and to realize that you have to have fun. Above all else, badminton is about having fun, whether you're at the Olympic level, the recreational level. It's a great game. So let's get to work. So the backhand side, let's recap how we're getting there to begin with. So we've got our prep, the racket reaches, we're following, and then if I imagine I'm hitting the straight net shot reply to my opponent, then as we know from previous sessions, our recovery is going to mean we hover. We come back with one jump, hover close by so that we can pounce on the follow-up. This session is all about how do we do the follow-up. It's all good and well to be prepared for it, but you have to have the right steps to follow back forward. So similarly, as we covered on the forehand side, there are two ways to pounce back onto that shuttle and to keep the offense position. The first is after I reverse back in my recovery, I'm ready and then, as we've done in other shots, I pick up my left and follow with the right. Now that sounds like all the other steps we've been doing, but the difference with this one, just like on the forehand side, is the speed. It has to be fast, lightning fast. So it looks like this, prep, left, right. I'm waiting and quick. I need that extra quick surge to push my whole body and racket forward again. If I get a soft push, I'm not gonna have the speed I need to get back there. So again, that tarantula's there, something to imagine pushing down very fast forward again. Now a common thing that can happen when practicing this both on the forehand and the backhand side is that people get carried away with the speed and they let their upper body and their racket move with their feet. This is what it can look like. So I've hit the shot and then I wanna reverse and I pull back and now all of a sudden to get that momentum to reverse, I've yanked my elbow down, I've jumped back and now look at my racket. I'm not wrapping here. This is not an aware and prepared racket. It's way down here. So one metaphor that I find really helpful, because I was a musician myself when I was younger, I played the cello. Not very well though, there's a reason I pursued badminton. But what it helped me to learn is, you have to separate the left side of the body from the right side of the body. If you're a piano player or even a drummer, you have to be able to separate what you're doing with this hand and this hand and let them work independently. That's the same when it comes to almost all footwork and badminton. We have to separate the lower body from the upper body and be able to coordinate them connectedly, but also letting each one do what they need to do. So when we're moving backwards from the net or in any position, let the feet take the pressure staying low in your legs and keep that upper body steady and stable. The racket's job is to be alert and ready to pounce on the follow-up. Here's what it would look like. Reach and ready, pounce. Again. Reach, ready, pounce. Let's show it for the lefties. 
So I'm separating my racket, my upper body from my feet. My feet are getting me in the right place, but my racket is staying stable and concentrating on the next shot that's coming. Reach, pounce. Reach, pounce. So again, like we reinforced on the forehand side, let's listen, listen to the rhythm to help us assess how quickly those steps need to be. So we've got bum, 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 bum. So these are the long steps, so that rhythm is slower. Bum, 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 wait and go. So the closer you are to the net, the faster your steps are gonna be. Now for the second way of doing this. Again, this is the only exception, so enjoy it for the flying fish. Only when we're that close and we're following up are we allowed to use that footwork. So in that case, it would look like this. Prep, left, reach, and then I hover, and now, assuming the reply is within one jump away, then I can follow up with my dominant racket leg. Again in slow motion, reach and follow up. So all my weight is pulled onto the front foot as I jump forward. Now, even though we're doing this flying fish footwork, that doesn't mean that we actually have to look like a flying fish. We can still control that upper body. Remember the musician metaphor. So control your upper body, keep your chest and chin up so that as you're jumping in, you're not gonna collapse over top of your leg. You're gonna keep your body positioning and then recover because the next shot's coming back again. We always have to prepare for the next shot. And then if it doesn't come back, we can just be pleasantly surprised. So let's see a combination of both of those. Quick step. Flying fish. The same rules apply on the backhand as the forehand when it comes to when to use the flying fish compared to the step left, right. If the bird is coming within your one step range, then it's permitted and often the fastest option to go simply off of your front leg. But if you're playing someone with great accuracy and they've moved you all the way out, or maybe your shot itself was all the way out, so the reply will be back all the way out, or for doubles and mix where you're using all this region of the court, you have to know how to access that left-right combo. So let me show you a flying fish close and then a left-right all the way out. Up. And all the way out. All the way. Because that extra step allows me to really kick out that front leg. And we recall from previous sessions, kicking out is really important to get the distance in the lunge that we need. A common error that occurs as well as falling over in this one is also that the racket head, after the shot is hit, the racket head will follow too far along into the distance. So keep control of your racket. Be that spider we talked about. So even if the shot is way outside, Stay control of your racket in control so that after you hit, you can be back and ready for the next one. Don't let yourself have a runaway racket that keeps going because the racket's gonna run and then your arm and then your whole body's gonna fall. So here's an example of the runaway racket. Becomes a little bit like the same problem as a flying fish. All your energy falls forward and you're slow to recover. So be aware of keeping control of your racket follow up and then be ready again because who knows that one could be coming back hopefully not but it could so the assignment today similar to what we assigned in the same drill for the forehand side is timed so if you have a stopwatch great if you have a timer on your phone 
or you can watch a big clock, I want you to do 20 seconds on, 30 seconds rest for 10 sets. And I want you to do that with each one. First with the left follow-up, left step, and second with the flying fish. And then I want you to do a third set of a combination where you are yourself imagining if it comes closer, then I'm gonna do the flying fish. If it comes further, then I'm gonna do the step out. The more you imagine and visualize, the more you're gonna get out of these drills. Great job. So remember that metaphor of the musician being able to separate your upper body and lower body. That's gonna be really useful as we move on into other courses and other footwork exercises. Step your game up.